What's going on YouTube? We're back at it for another video and today we'll be doing the Volcano Manor Guide. Now this video is going to be a bit longer than the previous ones, but I'll explain that here in a second. Now the essential starting point that we'll be heading off from is the Road of Iniquity side path. We'll head straight down this path all the way until we hit this bridge and come across to get our first uh, Lost Grace. But the reason this one's going to be a bit longer is this area is pretty linear and we'll pretty much be wrapping around the entire vicinity right here all the way through. And since it is so linear, I figured why not do the entire thing? It's a lot of good loot out here. Some things that are going to be very helpful later on for certain areas as well. And a whole lot of loot, pretty much good for any class out there as well. But this is going to be a bit of a long one, so we're going to get straight into it. All right, guys, let's... Uh... Let's start that long journey we've got ahead of us. Essentially, we'll be staying along the main path until we hit this wooden bridge. That's when we're going to hit that first Lost Grace checkpoint. I know a lot of people will not have the map for this area. That's why I chose to start at the starting point back there. That way, most of the people would either already have the map for that area or at least be able to uh, recognizably see where that Lost Grace location was instead of just being stuck... Uh, trying to find that bridge and not understanding where to jump into this area because this is I believe one of the only routes inside of here besides uh, a teleportation but as soon as we get in here we're going to have a couple of those machines next to a ladder you definitely want to take those out before you start heading up because they can be problematic in trying to just get up that way but before we head up that ladder we're going to head off to the right got a couple of dogs and we'll be running into one of those random encounters with uh, I believe an NPC version of an invader. From this invader, we'll be able to get one of those uh, finger things and a nice little uh, great sword or great axe. Uh, doesn't really look like an axe to me, but it's pretty interesting. If you put it on, it is quite massive. But over here on the right, in this broken down bridge, we're going to have a storm sword key. Going to need a few of those for later on. If you don't have any, trust me, we're going to have more than enough for the area that's coming up, especially with this guide. We find just about a handful of them, but heading back to that ladder, we'll start heading up. That's why I considered this area to be a bit more linear. We're kind of going along the mountain sides, constantly going up some ladders. A lot of it is uh, some very straight and narrow alleys, pretty easy to go along with. But over on our left, it's going to be another Lost Graze location, and we'll also have a graveyard filled with those uh, gold runes. Can't have enough of them. Hey, anytime you can uh, just start stacking those up to save them for possibly purchasing something later, or just maxing out those upgrades for levels, perfect for you. But in this met or on this guy sitting uh, next to the cliffside, going to be one of those somber smithing stones. But from this point, we'll start heading over to the right, and up here is going to be. Uh, not exactly sure what's going on, but all these guys seem to be eating their uh, fellow comrades. A uh, bit strange. Not exactly sure what's wrong with them or what's plaguing them to cause this, but some of these enemy types will be lightning. They'll have throwable lightning strikes. Some of the knights going forward as well will have uh, lightning abilities. So do be aware of that before heading in here. And we'll also have a pumpkin head over here, but as long as you have that upgraded weapon, going to be taking them out fairly quickly. Now up on top of the siege tower, we will have uh, one guy with a flame pole on the very first section, and then we'll need to take out a guy that's been throwing some of those uh, throwable lightning uh, projectiles. But over on our right, we're going to be picking up a new bow. Not exactly sure how great it is, obviously. Working with just a great sword here. But over on the right side is where the person we're going to find that we need to take out that keeps throwing that lightning damage stuff. And then we'll probably just head back down and start heading over to the left across this uh, downed rock, something along those lines. Not even sure what to call it. But you'll notice we'll have some rainbow stones over here out of the blue. What we're going to need to do is head over to the left immediately. I believe the guy's name is Patches, you know, little scout, little scoundrel guy. Not exactly the most friendly. Obviously is. uh doesn't have a good image, apparently, in the community. I keep hearing about him. It's, there's only one thing that apparently he didn't lie about, but as soon as we get to the last Rainbow Stone, we'll get hit with a cutscene where he promptly throws us over. Now, once we get thrown down here, 
there's going to be a bunch of these lizard things that start spitting out this gas. You want to make sure you avoid that gas at all costs. It's pretty much the only attack that they have. They cannot damage you besides the gas itself, but if you linger in that gas for too long, you let that bar max out, that's an instant kill right there. Going to be very frustrating if that happens. I'm not sure if you actually uh, spawn back down here if you do die. I actually didn't die down here, so I, I'm not 100% certain. But just in front of those lizards, after we take those out, do make sure to take those out because you do not want that gas following you at just about everywhere. But over to our right, we're going to have another one of those stone sword key rooms or dungeon, technically. Now, you want to quickly get at your uh, lantern or torch because it is going to be quite dark in here and we'll have our first Lost Grace location down here at the bottom. Now, inside of this cave, we're going to be finding more than a few items, but one that's specifically going to help us uh, later on in a different area that just further increases our, our immunity. As soon as we get there, I'll show that to you. But we're going to have a couple of drop-off points. You're going to want to make sure that you're looking where you're going. Make sure you're not following to, following to your death. Could be very frustrating. But inside of this cavern, there's going to be poison everywhere. You'll notice that all around you, you'll have a few spots that you don't have the poison. More than likely, you're going to have to deal with it. Now, I haven't actually found a consumable that takes poison off of me just yet, or craftable consumable as well. Pretty much everything else, I, can, I have a consumable that can alleviate it, but I'm not sure where that uh, consumable is that will take the poison off. Still yet to find that one just yet. Possibly something over at Storm Bale that I haven't fully cleared just yet, but we get, we'll be getting to that at a later day. But from this point, we'll be heading back in, going off to the left. Now we'll have, uh, I believe, five enemies in this next room, and we'll also have... Uh, it's not, not just this room yet. There'll be one that's going to have a giant flower inside of it. Now from this point, we'll head over to the left, Grab him another consumable. I believe that one takes off Scarlet Rot. Then we'll be heading over to the right. We'll be dropping down over here. And we'll be heading to the left and not the right. Even though I'm showing you to the right. This is the uh, way that we get to the next portion of it. Just had to make sure it was solid, easy to follow lineup. So I know a lot of people got lost when I did more than a few cuts and would be a bit difficult to follow at certain times if I just told you where to go, but hopefully this is uh, making it a bit more clear, helping some of those people out, making sure that uh, maybe we uh, sacrifice a few seconds here and there just to kind of double back on certain things, but we still have the information. This is going to be the room just behind it where we're going to have the uh, giant flower. That may take some time. It will spit out some poison. You'll need to back up from it, but if you want to face tank it, by all means. But inside of this room, we're going to get it almost full set of armor that's going to be this like fungi armor now i have the helmet for this but you will not get the helmet out of this area you'll get it from a completely different area which is essentially going to need this full suit for the max immunity we'll be getting to that in a different guide but it does look pretty funny now heading back to that hole in the ground you obviously want to make sure you're looking down where you're dropping because this is another one of those where you could clearly and easily just drop straight to your death and then have to go through all that poison again all those enemies very frustrating so take your time with this one i made sure to slow this one down that way you can make it on through we'll also have some rats over here a little bit more of that crafting material or that might have been something else i couldn't really see it looks like grass petals to me but we'll be dropping from this point, kind of dropping off to the right. I think you can survive that drop without taking any damage, but nah, I just wanted to drop off to the right just to make sure. On our right is going to be the boss room, but we're not going to head in there just yet. We'll head back to the left. We've got another item back here with a rat or the gold rune. Can't have enough of them. Now in this next room, this might be a bit frustrating for some people. I really hate this enemy type. It's, if you've ever seen this thing before, it has a ranged attack and it has a really strong ability to avoid damage. It always runs off to the side every time that you go in to strike it. But if you have enough damage, you will be able to stagger it. But most of the time you'll get one shot in on them and they'll start running off to the left or the right trying to spear you up. And if you get some distance from them, they'll start slinging out these shots right here that are kind of hard hard to dodge at certain moments but hopefully if you've got solid damage with you you're going to make it through pretty smoothly 
Now with this, we'll also have a rune, or no, not a rune, a talisman that's going to increase our power or our attack power based on things that have rot or poison around us. So anytime that you're using some of those consumables or maybe possibly spells that could possibly add rot or poison to them, you could be getting a damage buff from having that talisman. Now from this point, we'll start heading off to the right. I believe we're going to have more of those lizards kind of all over the place now. There's going to be a couple of dead guys over here or, or husks, whatever you want to call them, essentially zombies. You know, you could take them out fairly easily. Just get some runes up. Pretty easy to grab these uh, or kill these guys off. But from this point, after we've killed all these guys, we'll keep heading down. Now, here in a second, there's going to be some uh, type of flame guys that's coming out of the ground. You really want to avoid these. They're not the most devastating, but they can take down your horse. They can take down your health pretty quickly if you keep getting bounced in between them. So do make sure to kind of cautiously move on through. On our right is going to be another one of those gold runes. And we'll be at our second Lost Graze location, right outside of a almost miniature castle. We'll start heading up the uh, right side through this graveyard, past these jellyfish, and behind this tree, I believe well, we've got another stone sword key. More than a few in this area. Now from that point, we'll start heading off to the right towards the castle. There'll be a few enemies over here. Not too hard to take them down, but they do have flame abilities, so do watch out for that. Now, once we get into the castle itself, it's going to be a fairly small castle. It's not exactly that extensive. This is pretty much the main portion of the entire castle. But we're going to have this uh, bigger boy right here shooting some flames out of the top of his head. You know, he's he's serving it up at who knows what type of restaurant, but he's got a fiesta. That's for sure. But from killing him, we'll also get some type of red hammer that does not do fire damage. I thought it would do fire damage. I thought, I mean, it's a red hammer. You'd, you'd assume flaming guy coming at you. That's possibly something that would come out of it, but instead it's just a massive hammer. But in this next room, we'll find another one of those cookbooks. Then we'll promptly head up the stairs after we check for a few secret walls that are absolutely not there. Very frustrating. Now, once we get up top here, there'll be a couple items. No enemies up here. We'll get some crafting material from here there also a gold room getting a bit ahead of myself it's a bit early in the morning but we've got a long journey to make people now over here on the left side we'll need to jump over to this wood platform we'll be grabbing up another one of those talismans this one is going to increase our fire attacks but also degree decrease our uh, damage reduction to it i believe that's what it means i don't know if it means overall damage reduction or just a fire as we increase our fire damage could be pretty useful for some of those sorcerers out there or anybody that's using some type of flame ability or possibly even just uh, dragon abilities. If you've got flame breath on that, that could increase that power substantially. But right outside to the right, we're going to have these, uh, I don't even know what to car, car heads, flaming car heads. Yeah. Best bet is to get up behind them and try to hit the guy in the very back. But hitting that guy can be extremely frustrating. The hitbox on that guy, sometimes it just keeps slicing the cart itself. Not going to be doing much damage. So you might be better off literally just going straight past them. But over here in front of the fire, we're going to have another one of those crafting materials. And from this point, we'll start heading off to the right. Now in this next area over to our right, we're going to be facing off with a different type of dragon. This one's going to be a ground dragon. Can't exactly fly. I believe it possibly could at some point, but uh, it definitely doesn't fly in the game. I believe it had wings. I, I'm kind of losing my train of thought here. But you'll see it coming out of that magma. It's it's going to be spitting up fireballs, but this time it's going to be pretty much spewing fireballs that leave magma behind. Do everything you can to completely avoid that magma because it will melt you quite substantially. Even if you have a talisman on that is decreasing that flame damage, the worst part about the magma is it's not only going to start uh, doing that damage over time, it's also going to slow you down, so it's going to make you more prone to this guy's attacks. And about midway through this fight, yeah, here he goes. He's going to flame or magma his own weapon as well. So not only are you going to get slowed down from the, the bile he's throwing up, but you're also going to get slowed down anytime you get hit by this guy's uh, weapon itself. But as long as you kind of 
stick close to him as soon as he gets up on his hind legs. You'll essentially be able to keep doing circles around him. Now, okay, I thought I was going to be sitting there for a lot longer there and thought I uh, messed up the editing, but we'll continue along the right path from this point. And down here, we're going to find some uh, things that may be good for some of those sorcerers later on. Or down this path, there'll also be a vendor, I believe, that's for a sorcerer at the same time. Or teacher, as I see on some of the comments written on the floor in front of these people. But from this point, yeah, we're kind of... It's another one of those moments where we're kind of going here and there and doing a little bit of backtracking. But up here in front of us, another one of those graveyards. Plenty of those gold runes for us. Just keep that levels coming. Now, somebody decided to write in the middle of this. And, uh, you know, it's pretty hard to grab up that gold rune for whatever reason because that was there. Now, this item on our right, you see the statue with the blue glow out of it. That is something that we can't break for whatever reason. But we'll need to find something bigger and stronger to break it. Which, we have a giant bear in front of us that we'll be utilizing to break this. We'll just need to kite it into the uh, statue itself, and then it'll break it. Kind of crazy that we can't break it ourselves, considering we've already killed a demigod by this point, but uh, you know, I guess sometimes you just need a helping hand inside of Elden Ring. I guess the, the one time an enemy helps you. Now, he might not aggro officially until you go up and strike him, so you... You're going to need to uh, run up on there. Now, these monkeys will be throwing some flame things, so you really want to take take care of them. But you notice right here, boom, we, we've got it. He just shoulder bashed it and then straight over the edge. One thing to uh, note about that. Now, after we die, though, you know, lucky enough, it's still broken. We don't have to do it again and, you know, hope for the best and not get knocked off. But that bear is still going to be there. He's going to be a bit of a problem. You're really going to want to use that oval strat with this guy. Because trust me, he's going to be super aggro. You're going to have to take this guy down. He will chase you all the way to the end of this and back. That bear's not messing around. He's like the honey badger. This is the oversized honey badger. This is the honey badger of Elden Ring. But, that being said, you want that oval strat? <laughs> I mean, there is nothing that's staggering that bear. I mean, you could strike it as many times as you want. I mean... He's giving you a good old bear hug. Somehow I survived it, thank God, because I'd have been whew, pretty toasty after that. But you'll essentially just need to keep striking him, keep trying to avoid his attacks, and just getting in those one strikes here and there. But after we've taken him on, we'll keep following along that right side path, and up here there's going to be another one of those villages, and on our left side we'll have some more crafting material and a small bear that just gets one shot. What a joke. Put that bear off to the side. He needs a bit more growing to actually be devastating. But up in front of us, there will be one of those scarabs with a health replenish, so that's going to be perfect right after that bear fight. I know a lot of people may be taking some serious damage from that, and I, sh I certainly was, so I had to down a few. But right over here on the right, we're going to have another one of those new crossbows for any of those ranged characters out there. And we'll also be grabbing up a new Lost Grace. Now, over on our left, there's going to be a bunch of sheep. There's actually some monkeys hiding out in there. We'll need to take those out. They're going to be the ones that throw those flame balls or whatever they are, some type of uh, throwable flame. And there'll be some more headed up here and another robot. Now, robots just don't care about these uh, fortifications. They're just running straight through it. And uh, I'll tell you right now, being on horseback facing against a robot is not the ideal situation. I'm going to tell you right now, don't be like Reaper in this moment. It was a very poor choice. You're going to need to take it on face to face, just kind of kite it. I mean, you'll notice right there it's trying to get me, and it's just stuck in the wall, essentially. I got pretty lucky right there. But from that point, we'll start heading along, heading along that right path again. We'll have a sacramental bud right there on the right. There will be some of those sacramental buds uh, growing wildly amongst this area as well every time that we see those anytime that you see one as well you want to grab that up it's going to be helpful for later on especially for a certain area where there's a lot of scarlet rot you're really going to really going to want that uh, stacked up for those moments now from this position over on the right we have another one of those mages out of the blue there's going to be more than a few mages coming up as well but on our right next to this monument going to be another of those starlights Sacramental Bud over here on the right. Want to grab that up. 
and devil and back on our left we're going to have another one of those mage uh, helmets but this time it's going to increase our endurance and i believe our endurance and intelligence kind of a weird combo but I imagine there's somebody out there that needs that and we'll also get one of these uh these speaking things you know i'll, I'll let you uh choose to use this on your own but it says you're beautiful and if you've heard the other ones you know you'd think it'd be pretty funny but it, it actually comes out kind of creepily uh, very creepily actually you'll find out once you grab it up it's worth the uh, test run on it but over here on the right we're gonna have uh, some type of armor for a mage i believe i don't even think it's really worth it i checked it out i when i looked at it i was kind of just meh not not even something i'd uh, ideally want for anybody maybe i'm wrong I'm definitely not a caster, so I don't know the full length of it. But up in front of us, we're going to have uh, one of those overgrown monkeys that uh, has turned into a mage, essentially. I guess they're working together. But should be able to make quick work of this guy. He, he's fairly simple. He essentially does the same thing as some of those weaker mages, just throws a couple of them and then kind of stomps around. But we'll get a memory slot from that, increasing our, the number of spells we can have at one time. Now, this is the guy that I think is a teacher for some other people. Somebody in chat was telling me that for anybody that's melee or not a sorcerer, we're essentially just going to get that spell and that's it. But other people that are sorcerers can apparently talk to him and uh, communicate to have him as a teacher, possibly. So let me know down in the comments if you're a sorcerer and you run across that guy, if you can talk to him, because all I got out of him was that spell and he did not talk to me. Now, from that long... Uh, rock over there we'll be heading off to the right we've got a dungeon down here that we'll need to complete we'll head down this elevator right here it's going to be a bit of a long ride down but from this point we'll be able to grab up another of the uh, lost grace locations we'll be heading over to the left this is going to be an interesting dungeon right here that you will you will die inside of i need to make that clear beforehand you really want to spin those runes right before we go down here make sure you uh, get that done because once we get inside of here, there's going to be a rolling machine that we cannot destroy. It's constantly going to go up and down. We'll need to hide on the right or left spot. You'll notice as we come along, this thing will go back up, and then we'll need to jump over to the right. We've got a skeleton over here. Need to make sure that we finish those off. So obviously, the skeletons, they will reanimate if we don't. But from that right location, we'll head over to the left. As long as you're sprinting into that area, we'll have one guy that just jumps out out of the blue, and he'll just get run over. Now, by the time this thing goes down again, we'll be heading down and to the right. Then we'll be waiting on it to go down again. And over to our left, we need to jump, grab up another of those glow warts. And inside of this next room, on our left is going to be immediately a uh, crossbow uh, rapier person. Not exactly sure what to even call him. Uh, jackal, irritating. Probably uh, the best names I can think of, but there's going to be more than a few of them in here. And more than a few of those glow warts. And even in the back end back here, there'll also be some guys just kind of hiding in the darkness as well, but they're very easy to kill. Now, doubling back and going up the stairs themselves, we'll need to sneak up behind these guys. You essentially can one-shot them if you have some type of special ability when it comes to melee. Another glow wart on the right side. We'll just need to wait out this fire breath, move around the left side, and then move over into the right area. Now, in our next room, do not walk out. I almost got run over. But there is a glow board on the other side. We'll need to grab that and then head into the other room. Wait for that flame breath. And then inside of here, there's going to be no enemies. Or, well, actually, yeah, there is one more. Goodness. My apologies, people. Hopefully that didn't uh, get you. But we'll have a gold rune in here. And I believe once we come back out of this, we're going to try and go right. Now, this is where where you're essentially going to die. It's pretty much guaranteed, but there's one piece of loot up here on the right that we're going to want to grab. It's going to be the stone sword key. Now, you can try to get back out of here. I was not able to. If you stay all the way up there on the right, you'll be able to sit there, but for whatever reason, as soon as I came down, I mean, it just... The timing wasn't right. <clears throat> but from this point, we'll be heading down the same way, jumping over to the right, facing the two skeletons. Remember to finish them off. Then jumping over to the right, got another archer, take that one out, finish him off as well. Sometimes he'll fall on the magma, that'll finish him off as well. Then heading over to the left side, guy will jump out, gets run over promptly. Reanimation dies inside of the magma. Then 
As soon as he comes back down, we'll be heading down and to the right. Nothing over here, no enemies. Now we'll be waiting again for him to jump down, and then we'll head over to the left. Now this time, we're going a bit different. We're going to keep going down, and we're going to go down to the right. Now as soon as we touch that magma, we are going to be slowed down, but immediately, don't, don't go over to the left side. I just went over to the left side just to see if there's anything over there, but from this point, we need to start rolling on down. Now you're going to need a couple of health pots for this moment, but... As soon as you're able, we need to roll all the way down here and over to the left. From this point, we'll be able to grab up a chest that's actually going to give us quite the interesting weapon. We've got a, uh, a finger weapon. It's quite strange. And you can flick people with it for a special ability. It's kind of funny. It grows to uh, almost more than double its size and then just uh, it just flicks away. It's quite quite humorous. I'll definitely be upgrading this later just to see how well it can uh, actually perform, but I just thought that was hilarious. But from this point, heading back, we're going to go straight across the magma over to this other location where a glow board is, and we'll actually need to drop down behind here. Now make sure that you do look before jumping down. You need to be on the left side. That way you're not falling all the way to your death. But from this location, it looks like you might die from this fall, but you won't be taking any damage whatsoever. Well, I'm about to find out whether or not I took damage from this. No. Okay. Thank goodness. But we'll have a glow vort right behind us, and essentially this is the area that we would have been in had we taken a left and tried to run all the way down this instead of getting run over from the uh, top portion of it. But inside of this doorway, we'll be able to open this up, get on down here. I believe we do have a boss fight inside of here can't actually remember what this one was. It's going to be another one of those Firefoxes. I know some people have problems with these things. Uh, best bet, trust me, is just going to just pull out a summons, something that's going to aggro it, and then just go in as hard as you can as soon as that summons has uh, aggroed it because you'll see, I mean, I, I just, I, I've melted this thing every time I face it. Maybe casters are having a different story, but we'll actually get the Bloodhound uh, summons from this, which is actually the guy I got the weapon that I'm holding off of. So that should be pretty interesting, and we'll also get a chest at the other end, which will get another death route, which is something we'll need to take to a guy inside of the round table. If you've already taken to that, taken it to that guy, well, then you more than likely know the information. But from that point, we'll head back to the start, and we'll start heading back to where Patches is. Now, we can't jump over on this right side, but we'll head around the left, We'll talk to Patches again, and, uh, you know, he'll he'll do his whole spiel about being a scoundrel, and, oh, you're fine now. But from that point, we'll head over to the left, over the rock, and across this uh, rock structure bridge over here. Now, from this point, I believe... No Lost Grace. Not, the, not just yet, that's right. We've got the uh, crab person. Now, this guy can be quite frustrating. You want to kind of keep your distance, go in at uh, certain moments. As soon as he attacks, after you dodge it, if you can close in properly, you should be able to get some damage fairly quickly, but he does have some uh, elegant moves to him that are quite swift. But if you've got the right upgraded weapon, not going to be too much of an issue for you. Now we're on the right. There's going to be a little bit of crafting material, but it's not exactly necessary. We'll have... Uh, bit of a consumable right there, but I believe this is the moment where we need to head over. Yeah, so there's going to be a ladder over here on the right. We'll be heading up that. Now, over here, we'll need to head over to the left side and go up the left ladder. Now, I know you may have seen the ladder, the ladder on the right, but don't go up that one just yet. We'll be heading up this uh, left ladder, and there's also some Sacramental Bud over here. We'll need to grab that up. Perfect for that uh, later incursion later on. But we'll be heading up this ladder. And I believe at the top of this ladder is going to be a vendor. We'll be checking him out. You'll notice some some items over there on the right. We'll be dropping down to that here in a second. You want to grab up the uh, cookbook and the stone sword key from this guy. Maybe some other things. If you're a ranged character, you may need some of those projectiles or possibly the armor suits you. You just want to look a little bit different when it comes to cosmetics. But from, or straight over to the right, we'll be dropping down. 
grabbing up the loot from this portion. There'll be another one of those uh, whirly guys with the spears, but then we'll promptly head up the ladder that's just right there. Heading over to the right, we're going to have another one of those whirly guys. You know, just don't let him get into his motion. We'll have some flying monkeys that actually throw magma. Quite irritating, but at least they don't fly this time. Then over on our left side, we're going to have some more of that sacramental bud. And we'll just immediately need to head up that ladder now. Now from the top of this ladder, I believe we'll have some more of those uh, enemy types that are consuming their fellow uh, comrades. But over on the top, on the left side over here, they're going to have a couple of uh, lightning abilities. A couple of things that are... Uh, well, this one is, it's not a lightning ability, it's a, it's a madness ability. I can't remember the exact name of it, but if you get hit by too much of it, it'll uh, drive you mad. But down from that rock, we'll also have a little bit more of that uh, crafting material over on the right. And then we'll be heading up the right path, and inside of here is going to be a, a monkey dungeon, I think. I believe. Uh, I guess that's the best I could... Consider it, it's, it's a dungeon filled with monkeys. But over here on the left side, we're going to be jumping down in there. Make sure to pull out that trusty uh, lantern. Just so you can see in some of those dark parts, we'll grab up that uh, Lost Grace right here. And we're going to have more than a few monkeys inside here. Monkeys seem to be the easiest enemy type for me. Even rats feel more dangerous than them. Now, we're not going to jump off on our left side. We're going to head over to the right. We'll kind of walk on down, grab up that gold rune. Head back over to the left. We're going to have another path that we need to go down that's going to end up at the very bottom. We're going to be taking out some of those monkeys. We'll have the uh, bigger boy monkey inside here as well, dual stabby type, but should be able to stagger him quite easily, make quick work of him. Now, if you're a caster, I'm not exactly sure whether or not you can uh, summon inside here, but... That could possibly be pretty helpful for you, with some of these packs at least. But we'll be straight into a boss fight. I'm trying to remember what boss fight this one was. Goodness, this, I mean this is six plus hours right here. We've got another larger monkey that's a magic kind. Poisoned by the purple eyes. Fairly quick and easy to kill, but we will get a ballista type of weapon out of this, which is uh, just looks like a hand cannon in a way. Haven't tried it out just yet, but it seems to use the same ammunition type as the hand ballista, so that's pretty interesting. Be checking that out later on. But from that point, we'll start heading over to the right. We'll be crossing this wooden bridge right here, and we're going to be jumping straight into a boss fight right here. You want to grab that Lost Grace before heading in. Now, up on top of this uh, crater, we're going to have a type of gem bull. You're going to want to do this entire fight on horseback. Now... You know, some people out there might be able to get it done without the horse back, you know, might be able to dodge his attacks and do fairly well, but it's more than likely going to be a lot easier for people to uh, do it on horseback just to avoid some of his attacks and close in a lot faster just to get a few more of those strikes. As you'll notice, I mean, my weapon is one off of the max level that it can possibly be, and I mean, it's barely chunking that health. This guy's got more than a few moves that can be pretty irritating, but on horseback can be very easy to kind of avoid. You kind of want to essentially keep going for his uh, back end. You want to keep circling out and around to him. This move right here is actually really easy to avoid. I was just being... Uh, it's just That's a poor play right there. But essentially you'll be able to constantly kind of do that oval strat, just move to the left, move to the right, kind of hit that sprint with your horse and be able to avoid that attack. That's going to be another one, kind of one of those moments where you'll be able to close in behind him. Now he will stomp at certain moments and that is one of his very irritating attacks where he just digs up chunks of the ground and is able to hit you from a little bit of a distance. Now there will be some moments or there is a certain maximum range to this so if you can get that sprint going and be able to get away as fast as possible you more than likely do fairly well but when he does that move you want to make sure you steer clear he's going to be spiking up in that moment can be very frustrating now i believe he's he's in his charging mode right now this is what i messed up on earlier but you can see how easy it is he's only going to do it three times and then he kind of digs up at the ground and does this kind of slam up but you'll notice 
how certain moments, uh, I think I got fairly lucky right there where I was just outside of his tail's range on that one. But he'll have this move, that move as well where it's fairly simple. He'll do it three times, and the third time he's going to do the big up chunk of those crystals out of the ground but the other two you can kind of close in close to him get a couple of hits and he's just going to be stagnant he's just going to be casting that ability now anytime you see that purple aura around him you really want to make sure you're outside of that range because that's going to do some serious damage but we're closing back in again he's doing that charge move again very simple to avoid somehow I just got hit by a you know, bad place by Reaper in that moment Happens from time to time. This is Elden Ring. But the rest of his moves, fairly simple. Tail whip, as long as you're using that oval strat, kind of going out, wide berth in it, coming back in, you should be, uh, should be coming in just about the time, either right after he's done the tail whip, or just before he's about to do it, get that tag in, and then kind of sprint out away, given that uh, distance between you to actually m miss some of that damage. Goodness, fumbling on my words here. But you can see how long this fight's going to take. That's why I say do it on horseback. It'd be, uh, you know, it'd be very irritating if you made it this far and then, you know, you, you were on the ground trying to dodge some of his attacks. Next thing you know, he did that purple move that completely surrounds the circle area around him, lifts you up in the air, slams you back down. You know, you, you just, you're staggered in that moment, so you can't heal. You're just stuck in the moment where, you just take a massive amount of damage. Whereas on horseback, you're able to avoid those certain massive damage moments that you can't make the heal in. Even if you uh, try to dodge, you know, it doesn't, doesn't matter how good your dodge is in that moment, you're just stuck in it. You're taking that damage no matter what. Like in that moment right there, that could have been one of those where if you're stuck there on the ground, that could have knocked you down on the ground. You wouldn't have been able to shake it off as easy and move away fast enough. Now he's now this move, I'm not exactly sure how powerful it is. I did not get hit by this thing, but every time I just kept running to the opposite side that he started shooting it, and a lot of times since we're in this kind of crater, he, he will inevitably hit spots that, uh, or the angles just make it hard for him to hit you in certain moments. But again, keep trying to do that oval strat, and oh god. And avoid... Avoid these things as much as possible. Got pretty lucky right there, but sometimes that could have been that moment right there. But he starts doing that charge ability again. Ole. Oh, God. That was, that was poor timing for my uh, voiceover. Well, I got the horns on that one. But, besides point, we're closing in, but good lord, this is this is a long fight right here. I almost feel like I should have sped this up, eating up a lot of time, right? <laughs> but fairly simply, you're just going to keep trying to chunk away at that health hit by hit. You, you could arguably just keep forcing your way in and trying to do more hits, especially if you have the talisman that with uh, chained hits, you'll be able to deal more damage on that last strike. Could help you out. Now, I got quite scared right there because I thought he was dead from that last shot, and then he started to buck a little bit. Whew, no, no. But finally, we're done with that. We'll get a somber smithing stone, a smithing stone, and a new type of uh, colossal weapon, I believe. It's essentially just going to be one of the... Uh, I don't even know what to call it. Is it a horn, or is it a pincer? It's one of his pincers or horns straight off the side of his mouth. But from that point, we'll head over to the right. We'll be jumping off this rock ledge over here. And now we'll essentially be at the uh, front of the manor itself, the volcano manor. We'll be able to guide our way down from here. There's more than a few pieces of loot before we make it to the map itself and inside of the manor. And you want to head underneath that uh, rock ledge, grab another one of those gold runes. Then we'll be heading along the right side, I believe. There is also something over here that I need to point out that I'm sure a lot of people have probably been questionative of. We'll also have a uh, consumable over there on the left. But it's going to be these white feet print. Now these are, we'll also have that gold seed, but these are essentially scarabs that are invisible. You'll need to wait along the path of this thing. If you see where it goes, it's going to keep going that same route every time, and you'll need to wait and time it properly to hit that thing as it's coming by. 
Now I showed you uh, a little bit of the footage right here. I have edited this down here in a few moments. I think we will be finally at the point where I finally hit it, but it could take a couple of tries. You sometimes can kind of see where the pattern's going and try to get it at multiple spots. But essentially, you could follow it over to another spot, kind of line it up, remember where it is, and then have like three different chances to strike it, or you could just be sitting in the same one spot every single time and just trying to hit it like that. But uh, I'm telling you, okay, maybe I didn't edit this down. I should have. Good Lord. I just look like a fool right now. Maybe this was the moment. Oh, well, yeah. Uh, well, at least we're getting we're getting the uh, we're we're showcasing how frustrating this can be at times. Sometimes I'd almost argue that this is not worth it at all, and uh, your timing has to be pretty much impeccable in some of these moments. But as soon as you hit it once, you want to keep swinging because you know, just like any other scare, that one hit's not going to do it in unless it's just really low level. So you want to keep swinging to make sure that you actually get the full damage on it. I mean, there's no telling how many times I possibly may have hit it one time before that moment, since some of these scarabs are a three-shot, but we'll have a bunch more of those hands in this area. Now, one good thing about this is that we need to actually kill these hands. They will be dropping more of those somber smithing stones. Now, I left this in the footage because I felt you'd be a bit lost if I tried to cut it from the way that I uh, fell down from this. I wanted to make sure it's... Uh, Followable as much as possible, but essentially we're not going to jump up this rock. We're going to be jumping down Almost died from it But we'll be heading over to the right and we'll be grabbing up our map after we kill this giant hand over here Lucky enough it started to do its finger blast move So I was able to stun lock it and completely destroy it within three hits But again, we'll be grabbing up that map right there and we'll be grabbing up the somber smithing stones From any of those hands that we kill anytime they drop any type of loot, it's going to be another one of those somber smithing hands. Even the small hands will drop them. Now from that point, we'll head over to the left outside or underneath that uh, archway. We'll have uh, a bit more of those sacramental bud, and then we'll be popping over to the right. Now down here, we're also going to have uh, one of those slither creatures. I don't know if you've seen that movie. It was the thing that it reminds me of every single time I see it. It's just an oversized version of it. But on the right, we're going to have another one of those uh, fan knives. I can't remember what it's called. But over here on the left, you'll notice we'll see that slither thing, that slither monster uh, over there on the right. On the left, we're going to kind of glide by it just real quick. Just so we can get an item down here. There's going to be a couple of those whirly guys. We'll be getting a blood clot now. I, I probably should have said this before we walked up to it, but you probably want to get off your horse back and then grab it because uh, a horse has a mind of its own at certain moments. But from that point, we'll be able to cast a summons and then get ready to face that Slither monster. Now, this guy, I've already faced it in a previous video, and he's very frustrating. I hate this type of boss. He is massive, and any time he gets close, he really does kind of destroy your field of vision. But lucky enough, we've got the summons to aggro him. He's got a couple of special moves to him, very frustrating, and he's going to slither all over the place. It's hard to see some of his attacks at certain times, but as long as we avoid the madness he's spewing out, and just you pretty much need to target lock him just to give a better field of vision on him, but essentially want to get up behind him or get up to the sides of him as much as possible, avoid those hand moves, and just keep dealing massive amounts of damage. Now we'll get a couple of crystals from that that I believe are for crafting. I'm not 100% certain on that one, but we'll be heading back up the, uh, or back up to where that uh, Lost Grace was that we picked up over here. And then from this point, we've also got a ghost on the left side. But we'll be heading back up top now. We'll have a couple more hands to finish off, and over on the right side, we're going to have another piece of loot. Another one of those consumables giving us that uh, dragon ability to our weapon, I believe. And after killing these small hands, you do want to kill these small hands just to make sure that you get those uh, somber smithing stones. Now, I don't believe they'll drop them again. I believe it's only a one-and-done thing, so you won't have to kill them after that. But as long as you have run through it at least one time, you should have gotten all the loot possible from it. Now, heading up to the manor itself, we'll have a uh, magical bigger boy. It's not one of the uh, monkey types. It's going to be the... Uh, ogre types and this guy is going to start spewing out some madness so you really want to kind of keep 
close in on him. I'd almost suggest uh, it's easier to do it off the horse, but at the same time with certain move or the moves that he spits out, it can be frustrating if you get caught in front of him. But you should be able to hang just below him. He'll start kind of hitting you with that, but as long as you tag him, tagging him fairly uh, efficiently, ugh, efficiently, goodness, I'm losing my ability to speak right now, efficiently at the legs, you'll be able to take him out fairly quickly. Now over on the left side before entering the mansion. Goodness, guys, it is a bit early and I am losing myself. We'll have some of that sacramental bud. And then we'll be dropping straight in to the manor itself. Uh, uh, why is it? It's a bit slower right now. I do believe I may have forgotten that uh, I needed to speed this process up. One of those things that happens with some of these videos, but over here on our right, after we grab the Lost Grays, we're going to be talking with this lady over here. Now we're going to need to accept her offer. We have to in order to progress the main storyline and get deeper inside of the Volcano Manor itself. She'll give us a key as soon as we accept this offer. But right after we accept the offer, we'll be heading over to the left and not over to the right just yet to use that key. Now, I left this in... Now, the first time, I, I didn't accept her offer because I wasn't sure whether or not this was one of those pivotal moments that uh, would change the course of the game itself, one of those rare choices. But we'll head over to the left. Just make sure that you accept her request. It's not going to change anything over here on the left either. But this guy has one of those spin wheel uh, blades that we will be getting off of him after we grab that smithing stone as well. I believe it's basically one of the arms from one of those robots. Pretty interesting weapon, but do be aware that thing is quite devastating and can stun lock you, just like those robots. But right after that, after hitting every single wall inside of this room and finding no secret passageway, we'll be heading down the stairs again and heading over to the rooms on the right side of that table. And the first door on our right is the one that we're going to enter immediately. Now, you can open the other rooms back there, but I did not do that initially as soon as I got into this room, I found a fake wall on the right side. We'll also get some perfume bottles. I want to pull out that trusty lantern, considering it's fairly dark in here and there's more than a few snails. But as we go through here, hitting every single wall, grabbing up some more crafting material, and finding out that uh, there's no more of those hidden walls inside of this entire back section of the wall, we'll take out a couple of snails and head all the way down to a room that cannot be opened. It can only be accessible from the... Uh, back end over here. Actually, this will be a fake wall right here. I forgot. That's the only other fake wall we've got right there. And on his body, we'll find another one of those summons. I can't remember exactly which one it was. Ah, you'll be able to see it on the video. But we'll double back to the location where there was a uh, walkway going down. From this point, we'll actually be facing another bloodhound, which is the guy that we... Uh, just previously got his summons for. He's not going to be as hard as he was in the Evergalo boss fight, but he still has very similar moves and can still be quite devastating and quite quick, but if you have enough damage stacked up, you've got the proper uh, upgrades on that weapon, you should be able to make some uh, quick work of him. But there, over on the left side, we're going to have some more of those consumables. From that point, we'll be heading straight on into the manor itself. We'll be grabbing up our first Lost Grace from this location. Then we'll open up the doorway and we'll be inside of the Volcano Manor itself. Now we'll head over to the right and down on top of these rooftops we'll have a new type of uh, lizard enemy that'll be a sword and shield carrier. Not exactly the hardest to deal with but they've got quite the uh, extendo neck on them that actually extends their arms as well as you notice right there. Can be quite frustrating, do watch out for that because those swings can be quite devastating and stagger you quite a bit. We jump into over to the right then back over, we'll need to uh, head over to this rooftop over here, and on this bridge we'll find another one of those gold runes. Now these enemy types will be throwing some type of poison on it. If it stacks all the way up, you're going to have that poison lingering on you, but at least uh, poison itself is not the most damaging, especially compared to Scarlet Rod. But from that point, we'll double back, get on top of this rooftop. I'll have another one of those lizards and a couple more of those poison throwers, but on our left is going to be another gold rune. We'll be able to Make quick work of these poison slingers. 
And then down to our left, we're going to have another one of those robots. So we'll need to jump down onto this building below us, grab up the scarab that's on top of it, get another one of those uh, somber smithing stones. I believe that one's level 7. Now from this point, that robot can't get to us just yet, but he can jump down on this route. But we're going to have to take out that robot. There's more than a few things over here that we need to get through. You could arguably try and just run away from him, but generally I... I like to kill them at least once, because I, me and them have a long-standing feud, just like the Crucible Knight. So I make sure to take them out every time they try to chop me up. But, may take some time and uh, can be devastating on your health and potions. But from that point, we'll head over to the left, we'll keep walking along this main path, and over here on the left there should be a pack of dogs in the corner. We'll need to take them out fairly quickly, and grab up another one of those finger things. Or something to do with multiplayer. Now from that point, we'll be heading back down, we'll be jumping over here to the left. Actually need to, uh, or, we'll be killing a couple of dogs, they'll be a little bit of a bigger boy, not exactly the most, uh, damaging, that is, but if he does get you stunlocked with those dual weapons can be, uh, quite frustrating. Now doubling back next to the fire, we've got another gold rune, and then in this back room over here we'll have another one of those purple items, which is actually a type of holy weapon in a way. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what it does. Didn't exactly check it out. I thought it was actually a talisman, but it is a uh, holy artifact weapon. Uh, not 100% certain on what it does, but from that point, we'll exit that gate, jump over to the right. Not on that rooftop, goodness. We'll jump over onto this rooftop. Now, be wary of this jump going over. You want to sprint jump over. I did fall to my death the first time, so be aware of that. Now, from this point, we'll need to jump over onto this top right portion again, take out some of these enemies, and we'll be going for that last piece of loot that we missed over here on this rooftop over here. We'll just essentially need to drop down over here and then over to our right, grab up that uh, smithing stone. Definitely good for some of those shield bearers out there. And then from this point, after we take out all these enemies, we'll head out the gate, and then over here is going to be another one of those stone sword rooms. We're going to have another robot inside of here. We're going to have to take it out. Well, you could probably just run by this one and get up the stairs, but I don't know whether or not it could actually follow you up the stairs. Every time it gets me. Very frustrating. But after we make uh, long work out of this thing, because it is uh, it's a bit of a tank, we'll head back into the room that... Mm, I can't remember that. Yeah, there is a couple of enemies up top, some more of those poison slingers. But over here, we're going to find a talisman that further increases our max health. Now, we cannot have both of those talismans on at one time. So if you already have the other one and you're using it, upgrade to the greater one. It's just going to be a bigger benefit. Now, from this point, we'll be heading back on down. And we're going to be heading back to that, uh, that wooden staircase that we dropped onto earlier. Now, this is going to be a jump you're going to need a running start on. You're probably going to feel like you're barely going to make it. And every time that I did, it was a barely make it moment. I don't know whether or not you'll die from that fall, but we'll grab that stone sword key and then head along the left path. Now, there is something I need to make a key note of here in a second. We've got that gold rune on the left. We'll have that big pot down in no time. We'll grab up another type of fire shield. Actually, it does fire damage as well. Could be good for some of those people. But before we cross this magma, you need to be aware that these pots do explode. So hit them once and then roll back. Roll back immediately. Oh, God, I forgot I left this in. Very frustrating. But what you want to do is hit those pots and then roll back. I needed to make sure that people didn't get uh, jumped by that because it's a long way back down. Now we'll grab up that smithing stone. And then we'll be heading over to the right side. Then over here on the left, after I've done a little looky-loo, we'll jump over to this rooftop and we'll be able to jump over to here. Now this is one of those moments when, uh, you know, Reaper's kind of an idiot at certain times. It's not exactly the dumbest move, but we'll roll across this lava. Now it does end up working out, but there is another way to get over to this location without crossing the lava, but... When it came down to uh, finally getting around to the six plus hours of footage, I, I forgot that this was in here. I didn't make additional footage to uh, give you uh, the other option, and it would have been hard to kind of line it up properly without getting people lost with some of those cuts. I know some people were frustrated with that in previous videos, so we're kind of just going with that straightforward path here. But after we grab that over there, we'll, this is essentially the spot where we'll be able to come out of. Now, we'll be doubling back to this area a little bit later on, but 
don't worry, we're going to be grabbing up a Lost Graze here coming up a little bit here ahead. That way, when it comes to facing some of the things coming up, we'll be able to have a spawn point, that, point that's uh, a bit closer. But we'll be grabbing up that gold rune, jumping over here to the right on top of these buildings, doubling back over to the left, and taking out one of these... Uh, Poison spitters. Grabbing another smithing stone from this point, we'll be jumping back down and then heading back towards a staircase over on our left side. Now, you could have taken this from the right portion, but we'll be jumping onto these buildings just to jump onto the building across from here, so you want to make sure that you make it up on top of here. Actually, there was no loot up there. Hmm. Well, anyways. We've got a lizard guy over here, and we do not want to drop down on the right side just yet. We want to go to the left elevator first, head up on top of here, head over to the right. We're going to be grabbing another piece of loot. And we've got another somber smithing stone. Then doubling back to the left, and we'll have one of these godskin enemies. If you haven't faced these guys before, they're a bit freaky. Uh, there's definitely a cult out there on a hillside that's... Uh, quite chilling when it comes to the laughter, but inside this room we're going to have another boss fight. Now this one's going to be the Jiggly Bit guy. He's he's, he's Marshmallow Stuff Puff. Can't remember the name of it from uh, Ghostbusters, but he, he's the Stay Puff man. He's big blobby and he's going to get even more blobby. There he goes. As soon as you see that move run. Alright, let your summons deal with everything about that. He's going to be rolling that fat everywhere, trying to crush you. Whew. It's a devastating damage as well if he does roll on top of you but we'll get a god skin uh, something from that and then we'll be able to grab up that lost grace now just behind that we'll be able to grab up uh, some type of crafting material i believe we'll hit that i thought there was going to be something underneath it but we'll be doubling back from this point now over to the right we need to open up this bridge that way we can kind of cross both sides but we'll be doubling back again to go back down that lift after we kill that god skin guy get him done and then dropping down, and we'll be facing another dragon down here, like what we saw earlier down inside of that uh, cavern. Or inside of that uh, ridge down below past that castle. He's going to be doing the same magma thing again, so you're going to need to watch out for that. And there's going to be magma pools around him. You want to kind of kite him over into this right area. Make sure that you have a summons as well. That way you can kind of keep him uh, aggroed with the other guy, considering, I mean, look how much of that area he is covering with that magma. Very frustrating. This is why I chose to make sure that everybody got the Lost Grace beforehand. I know I've died to this guy about three times before this final fight moment right here, but as long as you've got some solid damage, you should be able to make it through. And if you make it to that midpoint where he magmas his own weapon, he should be a bit easier to deal with. You'll be able to close in on him pretty closely, get up underneath him and kind of hit him from the sides, get him from that tail as well, and be able to avoid his attacks fairly easily. Now, we get another dragon heart off that, I believe, even though I didn't see it on the screen. But from this point, we'll head all the way to the back right. We're going to grab up another one of those smithing stones. That one's going to be... Uh, I think that one's the, the best one. That's the best upgrade version of it. But from that point, we'll be heading back up the lift after I do a little bit of a roundabout moment on the stairs. Just getting my steps in, all right? Got to keep that weight off. But we'll be heading back up the lift, and then we'll be heading over to the castle on the left side. I believe we're going to be crossing the bridge. Yes. Essentially going back through the area that we just went through. Don't worry, we're going to be picking up that piece of loot over there on the on the uh, upper area over there a little bit later on. But we'll be jumping over here, jumping on down, making sure we don't take any of that fall damage, and then heading left over into this uh, miniature castle. Now, we can't open up the front door, so we'll need to head over along the right side, grab up that smithing stone first, then head up this ladder right here, now, there's going to be nothing on top of this rooftop, but we will be uh, jumping up on that rooftop a little bit later for a different, uh, or for a secret area, essentially. But inside here, we've got some, uh, got some, I don't really know what to call it. I guess it's BDSM, maybe. They seem to be uh, chained up to the ceiling, and trapped in some type of contraption that uh, has a bit of a nature that uh, seems uh, to that kind of lifestyle. 
all throughout this place. Be wary of it, but they, they can't crawl around. They're just stuck in it. But we will have some of these crawly dudes that are, they are the biting type. They are not the friendly, you know. They're that one that uh tells you they don't bite that hard. But after we made quick work of that, finally got into the ground floor, but heading over to the right, grabbing up that Lost Grace, and then over to the outside section, we'll have another, uh, we'll leave their explosive bolts right there. From this point, we'll be taking out that lizard, and then be heading over to this portion. This is where that ladder led up to this doorway. That's where we could have essentially made this a bit easier in a way, or a closer, fast travel point. Hopefully people don't die to that godskin guy. I'd hate to see that moment. Definitely hear about that in the comments. But we'll head all the way back up to the top. We're going to be heading out that front doorway and up to the ladder again. And this time we're going to be heading over to the right side. We'll be trying to get that piece of loot over on our left. But we'll need to jump down on this, uh, I guess, outside patio right here. And we'll actually get a frog head mask from this guy as well as a staff. And I couldn't find the staff exactly. Berserk, appreciate the follow. But inside this room, we'll have another one of those uh, smaller, bigger boys. And then we'll be able to head all the way down on the other end of that room up to this staircase. Over on our right side, we'll be able to grab up another gold rune. From this point, we'll need to head back to that elder or the temple. Temple of elder. I can't remember what it exactly said. But the temple right there. That lost grace is where we were at with that godskin boss inside of there. And from that point, we'll be heading up on that lift, grabbing up a gold rune back there in the left. Do a little spin, just get some action going for the stream. But from that point, we'll be heading out onto this outside patio area. We'll be doubling back and then be jumping over to this right side right here. Do avoid the magma. It will slow you down, cause a little bit of that damage. We're going to have more than a few of those flaming slugs, but very easy to take them out. And then across this bridge, we'll be taking those out. And up on top of here, we're also going to find another one of those multiplayer uh, items and then be jumping off over to the left. Now up here, I believe this is the area we're going to find another one of those robots. Now you can technically run by this one, but like I said before, we've had a long-standing feud. I take care of them at least once every single time. Then the rest of the time, I just run by them because I just don't feel like dealing with it. I've got my revenge at least the one time. But you can just jump straight into that window. No worries at all. You could just bypass this guy. No worries. Every single time. God, that gets frustrating to rewatch. But after we've taken this guy down, man, I should have probably just edited this down. Probably could have saved a lot of time on this video if I did not leave these in. But it's another one of those moments where it might have been one of those cuts where people are like, I, I just don't know where to go. But inside that room, we'll head over to the right, open up the door. We'll take out the lizard guy and then double back. We're actually going to need to uh, head down a ladder over here on the right side. It's going to be a couple of pieces of loot down here. And just over on our right, we'll grab the first one, which is going to be another one of those consumables. Then down the staircase, we're going to have a couple of enemies down here. I believe a caster as well. Yep, spot on. And then over inside of this little dungeon cell area, we'll have another cookbook that we'll need to open up and grab up. We'll be doubling back, back up the ladder. Heading back across the walkway that we just came from, through that doorway. And then inside of this room, we'll immediately want to take a left. We'll take down this uh, crawly guy, and there's going to be a lift right here. Now this lift leads back to that temple. We'll essentially go over to the right side on the ground floor, just right at that lost graze and be able to jump in there. But there's actually a secret room in the middle of this uh, uh, lift that will grab up this. Now, I know there's going to be a cut right here. Maybe somebody's going to be irritated, but please listen. We're essentially going to go back to where the lift is, drop down and hit the lever and then ride it all the way back up. I did not feel like in the middle of this video going back into the game just to get that tiny bit of footage as I was editing for four hours. It just was not a part of my plan. So we'll just go all the way back up the lift into that same room and keep heading forward. Now inside of this room we're gonna have a couple of enemies and we'll need to pick up more than a bit of more than a few pieces of loot. Now these guys that are that used to be the uh, the poison throwers are now 
going to be exploding head poison. So every time that you kill one of them, roll back. They're going to do this massive explosion of poison damage, but just behind us is going to be a ladder through that window. We'll head over to the right, jump up over to the right. We've got another scarab, getting another one of those somber smithing stones. Then along the path of this uh, cooled magma, we'll have another crafting material over there. I believe that was from one of the dead guys. And over inside of this little encased room, we're going to have a bunch of those lizards that spit out that poison gas. I mean, whew, I, whew, man, we're talking, we're talking centimeters right there from instant death. So do be aware of that. And be cautious with this room, but at least we grab that that lift so that way you're not going to have to go back all the way around that other section. You can just jump straight into this area, grab up that somber smithing stone, and we'll be heading all the way back up on top. Now that was just a guy that I killed earlier. You don't have to actually roll out there for somebody like that. But we'll be heading back over to the right, going back up the ladder. And continuing on with this area now in front of us there's going to be a whip lizard that has a magma whip very frustrating do be aware that his whip will be slinging magma just about all around him and over here on the right we're gonna have uh, some type of uh, cloth helmet probably for sorcerers or more than likely just for looks don't exactly know whether or not it's actually worthwhile but as you can see, he's going to be spitting lava all over the place. If you're standing in that, it could be some devastating damage. Now, I'm pretty sure I had low health in that moment, and I just didn't notice. But at the same time, he can also spit 100% poison damage on you and start that linger of uh, damage over time on you. But just past him, we'll go through this doorway. It's going to be more than a few of those exploding head zombies inside of here. So do be aware of that. Hit him, roll back, hit him, roll back. Then we'll be grabbing up another summon for some of these lizard type guys. Now you notice there's another type of lizard guy up there and he's got some type of thing on his head. It's essentially the same as the pumpkin head so you're going to want to make sure that you hit him in the body otherwise you're going to be doing a fragment of the damage when it comes to his head. But just back up the stairway we're going to immediately need to jump over to the right. Now I found this by accident, uh, this is actually something I came back for at the very end just before grabbing that lift actually because I didn't have that lift for the entire time that I ran through this even past the boss itself. But Im immediately once we get into this room you'll need to drop over to the right, hopefully I got that fast enough, but on our right is actually going to be a dagger talisman that increases our critical hit or enhances it, could be even more damage for those crits. Now we need to drop down slowly. Now down here at the very bottom, once we start dropping onto these crates, you really want to make sure you're dropping onto that crate properly. But on this last crate on our left, we're always going to take fall damage, so it might be a good idea to throw on that cat talisman. If you've seen my uh, Rhea Lucaria Academy guide, you'll have that talisman. We'll be able to avoid that fall damage, but there's going to be more than a few of those crawly guys that are biters hanging around inside down here. So do be aware of that. One of them still got me anyway. Very frustrating. On the other end of this room, we'll have a... What is it? I can't remember the name of this item. But this item, we need to take this back to a guy inside of the round table area. He's completely red. Can't remember the, his name. I think his name was Dung. That's the guy you're going to need to take that item back to. But going up to the right, up the staircase, we're going to be able to find that robot up there. Take it out as quick as possible or just run and grab that somber smithing stone. Then at the other end of this room, we're going to find another one of those abilities. And from this point, we'll be back at the very main corridor of the uh, Volcano Manor. But Patches is going to be here and he's got a vendor option this time. So you want to buy up some of his items. Now from that point, we'll be heading all the way back to that temple again, that Lost Graze checkpoint. And then from this point, we're going to be heading up onto the lift again. Now, for you, you'll be able to take the lift, but I had to take the long way around, so just make note of that. Just take the lift. Don't go the route I'm going right now. Uh, I'm essentially, uh, I've even sped this up 400 times just to make sure that we're just running all the way to the very end again where we find that mage type of lizard guy with the weird encased head. Now, just behind him on this outside patio, we're going to have a teleporter that gets us into the boss room. Now, the first time that we run in this, we're going to kind of run down things. We're going to show you what not to do, essentially. I'm going to make sure that we make that note clear. I'm going to tell you some of the things that's going to make this fight 
something of doable. Now, if you're a ranged person, this is going to be fairly easy, but there's going to be a left weapon on your left side that you're going to need to use if you're melee, because we need something that has range to it, and that weapon's going to give us range. Now, we're going to kind of describe how this boss fight really works. You'll notice that he's got a large magma pool around him. That's why we can't close in, and as melee, we're going to need to have that range ability, which that weapon will give us. We'll showcase that here in a second. But I'll show you what I did wrong, which is throw on a fire-resistant talisman and just try to wail on this guy. Now, it, it kind of works. I'm able to avoid his damage, but at the same time, I'm still getting massive amounts of damage from that magma below him. I'm eating through those health pots, and I'm barely doing any damage to him other than this one shot here and there that's just doing a massive bleed chunk, I believe. Now you can do this, and more than likely there's some people that are going to be able to do it without the weapon that we find as soon as we walk in this room, but I'll tell you right now. Save the pain for a different boss fight for where you can't make it easier. Because, uh, that guy is just going for something that is completely brutal. Now, we're going to start, there's going to be a second phase to this guy that was not the end of him, just to make that note clear. Now we've got the weapon that we uh, grab up as soon as we walk into this room. Now watch this thing do its work. Look at that. Oh, man. It's beautiful. Look at it just stab at him from long distance. Now, in the first phase, you don't want to use your summon just yet. You kind of want to just uh, avoid his attacks and then keep drilling him with that damage. It's even doing more damage than my regular weapon was doing. And we'll still, I believe, get that bleed proc here and there. Now, you will have a special ability one with this, and you can stagger this guy after a certain number of hits. I think this is one of those moments. Then you'll be able to really wail on him, get that damage in as quick as possible. You really want to melt that first phase as quick as possible, but at the same time, it's not hard to avoid his attacks. Sometimes he'll do a third bite on those moves, so do be aware of that. I believe this might be one of the moments. Yeah, there's the third bite. That's... Pretty much the only thing you're avoiding when it comes to his attacks. Either that or him just slamming down his uh, neck or head, essentially. And then just the two to three bites. I believe past the halfway health point, he'll do uh, the three bites more consistently. But you'll notice immediately health pod, get yourself back up to it. And then summon uh, your summons in. I've got the clone working with me right now that mimic summons. And I'll leave the cutscene in between for something as a surprise for you. Probably should have said spoiler warning before this. Well, we're already well past it. But he's going to have a melee weapon with him. Very simple to avoid this damage. As long as he's pretty much aggroed on that summons, you're more than likely going to be fairly uh, well off in this fight. I mean, you're going to be able to hit him from all the way over here. Now, those lines right there, those are going to be the explosive ones. Anytime you see those red flaming lines coming up, they're going to have that explosion effect right behind them. So you do want to dodge that. We've got him stunned right now, able to make some uh, quick damage on him, but sadly out of stamina in that moment. It will still be eating quite a bit of stamina with this weapon. But... He's going to have, yeah, there will be a moment where he starts blowing some uh, lava up from the floor. You're essentially just going to have to guess on certain moments like that where it's going to land. But take him down fairly quickly. Finally get that rune out of this guy. And we'll be able to move on forward. Now, from this location, we'll be heading back to the main manor waypoint after we grab this Lost Craze, that is. I'm trying to remember the name of it. It is, I believe it's just called Volcano Manor. Now, we'll go back and we'll talk to the lady over here. She'll give us this blah, blah, blah story. Now, if you want something, you want to see something strange, head back to the boss room itself through that Lost Grace location that we just unlocked after you talk to her. Something interesting. Definitely something you should check out. I'm not going to spoil it for you. Just go and check it out for yourself. But after we talk with her, we'll be heading back over to the right end where we first went into that first room. And inside of here, we'll have a couple of people to talk to. And we'll also get a letter, kind of an order thing that'll actually spawn up a red location similar to the death root thing that we got from the guy at the round table. It'll have a marker on the map for basically you to hunt down somebody from or for the order of the uh, volcano manor. 
But after that, we'll head back to the, uh, the Temple Lost Grace checkpoint. Now this time, we're going to be jumping down from the left side of us. There, there's essentially one more area to cover inside of all of this volcano manor. And I hate to say it, but I was uh, fairly lazy in this moment. Uh, once we jump over here to the right, if you haven't seen my Rhea Lucaria Part 2 guide, then you don't know about this section. You can actually portal to this portion of the map from Rhea Lucaria through one of the robots. I'm going to leave a link down in the description if you want to check out the guide through this area. It is fairly straightforward. A lot of the loot's in very open, easy to see areas. There'll be a double boss fight inside of here as well if you need tips on it. I'll leave a link down in the description with a timestamp on it directly on the moment of entering this precise location, but we're just going to run through it and we've got an area to cover right after this. I know that sounds a bit lazy, guys, but uh, trust me when I say uh, it's it's been a long one putting this one all together and just having to go and re-download old footage, do it again. It's When I've already got it uploaded on there and I can just use the timestamp to point you over to that video, we're just going to do it that way, essentially. And if you've already seen that video, then you, you've already been through this location anyway, and you've got this next Lost Grace checkpoint that's going to be directly on our right over here. But we won't be grabbing it in this video, considering we'll already be out here. As soon as we head over to the right end of these ruins, on our left is going to be another smithing stone. We'll have more than a few skeletons in this area. Be sure to finish them off before they reanimate. As soon as they've got that white glow to them on the ground, just give them one more tap. You finished them off for good. Now there is going to be a boss in this little pond area here in a few moments. We'll have that coming up, but over here on our left, there's going to be another gold rune inside of these runes, or ruins, as I should say. But do be sure to take out those skeletons now. This is when the boss shows up. Now you may think this is the boss, but this is not actually the boss. This is uh, some type of summon the boss is actually created. Now I'm not sure whether or not you need to take this out before the boss does show up because obviously on screen right now we cannot see it anywhere. But essentially he's going to be the same color as this skeleton, that kind of purple violet hue, and he's going to be on a boat and he's going to essentially be rowing around the river now. After we kill this guy, we'll actually move over to the right because I, I just couldn't find the guy. I legitimately thought that guy was the boss. I mean, it looks like one for sure. And I was wondering why each time I hit him, the health bar wasn't going down. But we'll head over to these ruins on the right. And here in a moment, the uh, the boat should pop up after we uh, kill some of these skeletons and take them out. Over here on the right, we've got another gold rune. I believe this is the moment. There he is. Straight on the left, we're going to see him. That purple, violet type of hue boat thing. Now, he can do some some type of splash moves. You know, it's pretty much magic carp. But we'll take him down fairly quickly and actually get a death root out of him, as well as a skeleton summon. Now, if you don't know anything about the skeleton summons, they are actually really solid. Don't know whether or not this one's going to be that solid when it comes to upgrading it. But with those skeletons, they will reanimate as a summons. That's the crazy part about them. Anytime that you summon those guys, even if they die, they'll reanimate unless they get that final hit on them from boss or something along those lines. Now from this point, we're kind of, this is one of those moments where all of this looks a bit confusing. So I, I had to leave in a lot of this footage, but essentially we're going to be doubling back to the area just behind us. That first runes you'll notice or you possibly noticed that there was a stone sword key over here. We'll need to open that up. Going to be a couple of skeletons down here. No real danger down here. I think it's just two of them. I actually picked up a scythe off of this guy, which was pretty cool. But I don't think it's it's one of those weapons that's going to be really that powerful. But inside here we'll have a chest that actually gives us a talisman that gives us non-physical damage reduction. So this means any type of elemental, I believe even poison types of damage are actually going to be decreased due to having that talisman on. So that's a, that's a pretty powerful talisman right there. Doubling back to the runes just below that, we'll have another one of those gold runes. From this point, we're, we're kind of kind of do the circle around. Kind of We touch these generally to find one of those uh, dungeons. And f for whatever reason, in the back of my mind, I was kind of like, didn't we already do the dungeon? I thought that one with the stone sword key was the one that we went in. That's the thing that I was pointing to, so... 
I kind of didn't think about it at first, but we'll be coming back for that dungeon here in a second. But there's a little bit of loot over here on the left that we need to grab up and then double back to that location for the final dungeon. We've got another scarab in front of us that's going to be giving us another type of Ash of War ability. And we're going to have more of those, uh, those geyser fires, so beware of that. And another golden seed, incre further increasing our uh, flasks that we do uh, have at any one of those Lost Graze locations. Now, from that point, after we grab up that last smithing stone, we're essentially back where we started, where Patch has kicked us off, and we'll be doubling back to that area to find the final dungeon of this area. Whew, we're finally making that, uh, that final loop here. All right, closing it up. Let's get it. Good Lord, hour and 20 minutes of talking. I'll tell you what, it's, uh, it's a lot harder doing it this way than it is on stream, because I can talk for eight hours on stream, but... That eight hours, it's not as non-stop as this full-on hour. Or hour and a half. But we'll be heading back up the runes, all the way to the last runes at the very back, and just beyond it, on the uh, right side, just on the uh, wall of this mountain. We're going to have a doorway that will be opening up. <clears throat> now we'll have another one of those lost grays inside of here, thank goodness. Some of those moments where we may get killed later on a little bit. But from this point, we'll take the lift all the way down. We'll head straight through the only doorway that's available. Trust me, there's no hidden uh, walls inside of there. I just hit every single wall inside of there. Not one of them. We'll have some lightning casting imps over here. Or I, I always think they're imps. They're gargoyles, apparently. I, I mean, they just look like imps to me. But they're gargoyles. We'll have that glow war back there. On our right's actually going to be an imp. I need to say that before it actually strikes. That's why I slowed that down for a moment. And then we'll be pushing on from there. We've got another glow board on the left side. And inside of this area, we'll essentially have some traps in the middle. you notice right there on our right, there's going to be one of those uh, pressure plates. That one can actually help you. It'll You can run by it, and it'll do like a circle radius of these uh, lightning strikes downward. You could utilize that against some of those zombies just to make quick work of them faster. Then we're going to have a Lightning Knight. Now he's got a couple of lightning abilities. Now he doesn't have it just yet right now, but I think later on uh, I'll showcase that. But so we will have to fight him one more time a little bit later. Or at least I didn't. But as soon as we get up that ladder, we'll have another one of those Stone Sword Key rooms, and we're going to have another Talisman right here that's going to do the same thing as the other one we found that did fire. It's going to further increase that lightning damage, but decrease our, uh, or increase our damage taken from, I believe, lightning, but I'm not sure. It could be all damage in general. Now, inside of this room, we're going to have a, uh, a floor that pushes us into spikes. Luckily, it's not an instant kill, but we'll need to go up underneath this floor. Now we'll be able to get to this back room over here. Now at the very end of this room, next to the loot, is going to be two craps. Be aware of this. Now there's going to be two of them, not just one. So be careful. Make sure you got that full health. Make sure you're going to be able to take these on because I'll tell you what, it stopped me out fairly quickly as soon as it rose up. Got me staggered. That was pretty much the end of me. Now I'll have a door over here on our left that... On the, our right is actually going to be a lever that we'll need to pull in order to open it. Now, you can take out those zombies just before, just in case you died and had to run back in here. Now, this is where I showcase, yes, he's got lightning abilities. But if you made it on through, you shouldn't have this type of worry as long as you make it past those crabs. But those crabs can be devastating. Now, we'll head back up the ladder and we'll be heading back into that room where the plate or the floor tries to crush us. Going all the way straight across, we'll have another lightning knight inside of here. Now, there could be a couple of gargoyles, so do be aware of that. You might want to take those out first as you're trying to dodge this guy's attacks. Can be quite frustrating. I hate knights in this game. But from that point, we'll be able to open up the boss room, and essentially from this point, we're going to be doubling back all the way back to the front area. Now, as uh, you know, I probably could have just teleported to that Lost Grace location, but there was a couple of things that I... Uh, Needed to make sure there weren't any hidden walls at. But at the same time, I guess that's the reason I don't have it uh, showcasing me just portaling back there. But by all means, you could just portal back to that Lost Graze because I'm going to need to sit at it as well just to get uh, all my health globes or my health pots back. But we'll grab up that uh, Lost Graze location, fill up all of our uh, potions, 
and then head into another cat dungeon fight. Now, if you haven't faced this guy before, he's uh, pretty easy to take on, very creepy. I'll give it that. It's a gargoyle type of cat. He can float in midair. Well, like just like that, very creepily. The movement on it, I mean, if it cackled, it'd be even worse. But fairly easy as long as you have the summon with you. Not hard to deal a lot of damage to it and stagger it. And as soon as we take that one down, we'll be grabbing up uh, a bell bearing, which we'll need to take back to a uh, certain vendor or a certain person inside of the uh, round table. <clears throat> now, I believe that is going to be the end of it. Let me uh, make 100% certain right now. We are at the closing end. Yes, that is that is everything. We are finally here. Hour 25, boys, boys and girls. We finally made it to the end. That was a long one. Hopefully it's helped you out. It took quite a while to put this one all together. But that is just about everything in that entire volcano manor area. If if it's not, you know, I say that because who knows, there may be one or two things out there, some type of secret that I somehow looked over, but I'm almost 100% certain that there is nothing left to that area that I did not find. But plenty of loot to really help you out on your journey. And the next video that we're going to be rolling with is going to be the capital city. And I feel like it is going to be just as long as this area was. So I may be doing that in a part one and part two section. I've already dived in quite a bit to the capital, but there's still more than a few things to comb over. I should have that up by at least Saturday morning or midday Saturday. Cause I know there's been a couple of people down in the comments asking about that capital guide. We've got it coming. Don't you worry about it. It's going to be this weekend for sure. Just got to make sure that I've got everything from that area. And it's a very large area at the same time. So it's going to take some time to compile all that video together, edit it in the proper manner to where everybody can follow uh, as easily as possible. But on that note, guys, hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to see some of this content live or check out some of that capital city in uh, live action before it's uploaded, maybe see if you see some things before you see the video itself that you may have missed going through, hit that link down in the description. Follow me over at Twitch. We'll be streaming tomorrow night. Couldn't make it last night. Had to really work on this video and a few other things. But at the same time, we'll be rocking it out tomorrow, making sure that we've got everything for that capital uh, city guide video. But on that note, have a good